Anything surprise you here? What were your takeaways from the fight, Mr. Chael Pisani? A lot of the really great fighters, and Anthony Smith is one of them who does this, they will go out against their opponent, they will hear the narrative, and they will do the exact same thing that's supposed to happen to them to, uh, to their opponent. John Jones is a fine example since he's so topical in his weight class. But John Jones, if he's taking on a wrestler, will come out and surprise you with a takedown. He's talking about a boxer. He'll go out there and he'll, he'll try to hit you with the ones and the twos. I only bring that up, Brett, because I, I fully hear your point that there was a narrative that if it was going to be a stoppage early, it would be surgery. I helped to support that narrative. I fully believe that Tom Aspinall should maybe get an undrug, maybe push him in the fence, maybe just circle and move. To come right out, he came to the body, to the head. He threw one more. It missed only because the guy was falling down. This is remarkable what we just saw. Well, it was incredible to watch. And, and while, I'm, while I'm sitting there cage side, I'm right behind Anik, and Tom looked a little uncomfortable at first. His movement wasn't exactly how I thought it was going to be. It was kind of in and out. I didn't see a lot of the angles. He, you could tell he was struggling with the range just a little bit. Uh, but the length of that of that right hand, it seemed like he threw it from so far away. And especially given that uh, Pavlovich had a, a significant reach advantage, that, that was a little bit surprising to me. I thought he looked incredible, though. Chael, I want to ask you a question. Actually, actually I want all three of you to, uh, to get your input on this. What is Tom Aspinall's ceiling as far as a superstar? Because now we know the ceiling, right? We know the ceiling as a fighter. This man is, is arguably the greatest heavyweight on the planet Earth right now. You can have John Jones, that debate. But coming from England, he's, he's got the heavyweight belt now. He just did this in Madison Square Garden. We're always looking for stars. We're always talking about star power in the sport, right? How big of a superstar can Tom Aspinall be? This is the perennial division. Tom happens to have one big leg up, which is he has one of the hugest stars in the sport, and Michael Bisping being a carnival worker in his corner. But, I mean, that's very real. Those kinds of things help. I watched Tom Aspinall, who I met tonight for the very first time. I watched him sell out the O2 Arena. I watched him sell out the O2 Arena a second time with Patty the Batty on the card. They did not make Patty the main event. I mean, if you want to speak up, big this guy. Now, I watched him sell out Madison Square Garden in a different country, and he did it on two and a half weeks' notice. Not for nothing, this guy is a star. Guys, there is a game that now has to be played. He did not get rich tonight. That's not how the sport works. Yeah. When you defend the championship, that is where you can get to actually be rich. I know time about money is gross, but guys, it's the truth. He needs to not stand for any of this. He needs to come up here and yell to anybody that will listen. I'm not waiting for these two old men who between the two of them will have fought one time in seven years. Completely agree. talking about Stipe and John Jones. Yeah. He needs the man to get right in there. He flew out to Paris and tried to do Surreal Gone a huge favor. Surreal Gone didn't take the bait for whatever reason. Now he's sitting at home watching these championship matches. I don't know that he owes Surreal the favor, but what I'm talking about is he needs to cut a promo, and he needs to get yeah. back in there. What he's done so far is great to set the table. What he does moving forward is how he becomes a star. Well, with respect to Hall of Famer Uriah Faber, if he grows up in Boston, Massachusetts, with the Red Sox, Celtics, and Patriots, as opposed to Sacramento, he's not as big of a star. With respect, the United Kingdom is the part of this. Mm -hmm. Their appetite for mixed martial arts is absolutely off the charts, and he's the goddamn heavyweight champion. This guy's going to make a lot of money. He's going to be one of the biggest stars in the company. I think even if he doesn't cut the promo, Chael Sonnen style, we'll see. Well, I, I think promo aside, no matter what he, no matter what, what he does next is the most important. That's if he goes there and he lays an egg and doesn't look great, then we're not talking about yeah. a, a Tom Aspinall as a star at all. He's got to fight. He's got to fight as soon as possible, and he's got to look impressive. Well, I'm just being told that Dana White is at the press conference as he always does this immediate post-fight press conference, and he says the plan still is John Jones versus Stipe Miocic. I'm with you, Chael. I think that there's only way to upset that plan, and that is to cut a promo so well that it, it forces their hand. And I think Tom had an opportunity there to say, John Jones, I'm standing in your octagon wearing your belt. What are you going to do about it? I really think he could have done that, but he's very, very authentic. He is a nice guy. What are your guys' reactions to uh, to Dana White saying, at least as of now, we know that this sport changes all the time, that it's still going to be John Jones and Steve Miocic? I will see that Dana White quote, and I will raise you a Dana White quote, which was done four days ago where he is calling Steve Miocic and offering him intern championship is just disrespectful. I agreed with Dana, but they threw to Stipe after Tom had the belt on him, and all of a sudden, it didn't feel like a favor. All of a sudden, it didn't feel irresponsible, and it didn't feel disrespectful. Now, the person we got to hear that from is Stipe Miocic, but I'm liking that fight more and more. You know, I, I, I don't... I, <laughs> This is so confusing for me because I don't – Chael talked about this a lot yesterday. What are these two guys fighting for? I, but I also don't want to miss an opportunity to have a John Jones versus Stipe fight. We talked about Anderson, Anderson Silva versus GSP. We talked about Anderson Silva versus John Jones, and we just drag those out, and we never end up getting them. I think right now this is the perfect opportunity to – for the one time, can we just get what we really want when maybe it doesn't matter anymore? Mm.
But to your point, they're not going to shelve Tommy Aspinall now for seven, eight months. I mean, that is so counterintuitive. So I wondered aloud about the Stipe Tom Aspinall on the broadcast, and my broadcast partners tried to put me in my place right away. But what is Stipe coming back for? Is it one final payday? What exactly is he coming back for? Because I would like to see Tom Aspinall and Stipe Miacic. It just gets muddy because we don't defend interim championships, and they probably don't want to strip John Jones. We don't need two champions. It's muddy. 